Hello there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how I store my stamps with their matching dies. Many of the coordinating die sets that you'll buy will be connected by fine metal strips and the best way to separate these is by using some fine wire cutters. I will be using the wire cutters today along with a magnetic sheet and some large plastic pockets. So let's get started. The first thing I like to do with new stamp or die set is chop the top off the packet. This is as opposed to the plastic seal at the back as these often get damaged further down the line. Many people choose to dispose of the plastic packaging that these stamps or dies come in. However, I choose to hold on to mine. I leave the stamps or dies still within them packets and then further store them within the pockets which are in shot now and I will come and show you later on in this tutorial. So I first remove the cardboard backing from the packet and I take a piece of magnetic sheets. This started off as A4 and I simply trim it down to size. It doesn't have to be exact, just enough so that all the dies within the packet will later fit on that magnetic sheet. Then I simply take a tape runner, run a few lines down the back of the magnetic sheet and stick this onto the cardboard backing. Be sure to tape down the correct side. There's a shiny side and a matte side. The shiny side is the magnetic side, so you want to stick the matte side down to the cardboard backing. Then go in and start snipping. Here's one I did earlier. <laughs> snipping all the wire connectors through the set. Some are more fiddly than others. Some you have smaller spaces to get your wire snippers in and I find that it can be easier to wiggle them and twist them as opposed to snipping them with wire cutters. What does happen more often than not is you're left with parts of the wire connectors on some of the dies. You don't want these to stay on there and so Use your wire cutters to trim these down. Some cut through like butter, some are a little bit harder, but it's worth trimming them off in the long run. I do recommend you take these little extra bits off. They are sharp, so take them off for obvious reasons. Um, but also, when you're storing them, they can be a little detrimental to the magnetic sheet. They tend to dig in and make it harder for removing the small dies or dies with them extra bits of metal that you don't want on there out of the packet. So as you can see here I twisted and pulled to separate each individual die. Um, this was far easier than using the wire cutters in this instance as the metal was very thin and just snapped like hair. Um, but I did go in afterwards and trim down as per before all the metal bits that were sticking out of the edges which previously had connected them. When you are trimming these metal bits down it is worth noting to take extra care to a not bend or warp the dies but also not to impair the dies themselves with the wire cutters. You don't want to accidentally trim the die with your wire cutter as this could then cause the die to not work as it should in future. So do take extra care at this stage. So when I'm doing this part of the process, I do like to keep a piece of paper on my desk to collect all the bits of metal that I'm trimming. They are so small and minute. You don't want them going in your eyes. You also really don't want them on your craft desk because they can be a bit of a problem in terms of scratching. Uh, some of them do flick off into the craft room never to be seen again. But in that instance, they are so small that they shouldn't really cause much of a problem. So I'm on my last few dies here. Some dies won't need trimming, some more than others. Um, the last die on the page here it's worth noting that you need to establish if there are smaller parts within the outer die that some don't need trimming at all. They are in fact part of the final outcome of the cut. So I'm just going to move the dies out of my way to dispose of any small trimmings on my page. You can see there's a couple there, not as many as there have been in past sets. 
Now I will bring back in the magnetic sheet and start laying out all of the metal dies. I start with the largest first and simply work my way through the remaining dies, laying them out on the magnetic sheet in no particular order. They can overhang the magnetic sheet slightly onto the cardboard, that really is not an issue as long as they're more on than they are off, they will stay. And you also find that they can fill a smaller space than as they first started when they came to you. So you'll see, despite the fact that the magnetic sheet that I used is quite some smaller than the cardboard back in, I still have a little bit of space to play with potentially there. And then I simply just pop these back into the original plastic packaging that they came in. So then what I do is I take the matching stamp set, I sit them back to back and I pop them in one of my plastic wallets which are five and a half by th seven and three eighths. I am in the habit of leaving the fold at the front and the stamps always go in front facing with dies facing outwards at the back. And that really is it. There's no real science or magic to it. It really is as simple as that. Some people like to label up their pockets. Oh, I haven't got around to doing all that yet. Baby steps. <laughs> Here are some coordinating die and stamp sets where I have used the same system previously. This one here is actual fact a CD case. Exactly the same concept. There's a fold at the top and they are perfect for the smaller sets, which I have a fair few of. There are some larger pockets as per the first ones. Here they are. These are six and three quarters by nine and three eighths. Again, ideal for the bigger stamp sets, which I have to admit I don't have an awful lot of, but they are perfect for the ones that I do have. And just for a size comparison, you'll see here there's a fair bit of difference and it's good to have the variety and just to have them in your stash for when they are needed. And that really is it. I hope you find this tutorial of some use. I'll link some of the items that I've used in the description box below. But goodbye for now. Take care. Bye bye.